and seeks to distribute an offer on the church this beautiful morning. And we gather to praise God and worship Him together. Uh, just, just briefly, briefly some of the announcements you'll receive them um, as you come through at the door. Uh, the activities, the charters continue on Tuesdays, Wednesday, and um, the turn of the Bible study mass in Cross Jar at 8 p.m. So please take note of that. And then I want to emphasize Thursday. Uh, the fundraising committee is 7.30 p.m. Note the time, 7.30, and that's to make final arrangements uh, for the track run. Thank you to Raymond and others and William who are involved in this, and Robert. Um, a number of stewards have volunteered, um, obviously for the route, um, but more are needed. So please speak to Raymond or to William this morning. And it would be good if you're planning to be involved in stewarding, uh, we're all in a bunch of to join on Thursday. So if you're able to do steward, plan to do that. If you could come on the past, uh, that would be great. And then on read, just to say that there is a congregation meeting at 8 p.m. Uh, we'll be in the number of all as at 8 p.m. And there are a number of decisions that will have to be taken in regard to work um, that are urgent. So if you're a committee member, please make a special effort to come along. Uh, and you'll see there are the details of Saturday, uh, the tractor run, there's a sign up sheet um, in the hall for food, etc. Uh, so please take note of that as for this Saturday. And then we'll be just normal next Sunday. A few other announcements and details of the community walks have started again um, on Tuesday evenings. So we'll go to various places, and many of you already have. Um, Taking part in those over the past year. So, various venues on Tuesday evenings, and anyone's very welcome. There are two walks, and there's more challenges walk, and there's a shorter and easier walk. So, we'd be very welcome if you can come in the past and are free. And then, please also know that the ladies walk. Um, there are three ladies walks, and the first is on Monday, the 3rd of June. That's the hour of ours, and then going uh, for our coffee, ice cream, etc., and coffee time. There are two subsequent ones, so please take a note of that as well. And uh, then to just to say also that in Carla uh, Main Street, um, they continue to have their ladies' evenings pampered and prepared. And the second one will be this Tuesday evening, so um, that has been announced before. So just to remind you of that. There are a few other announcements there that you will see. There's a um, car wash that's a little bit away uh, for Johnny Dan's team, but please uh, take a note of that. Yeah. And finally, the last thing back, to just a reminder of the day was designated as Gift Day, and um, so we appreciate your generosity. And uh, if for any reason uh, you haven't been able to bring it today, or we're going to have last Sunday to have the envelopes, I think there's still some available at the back. And um, certainly you can refer them again. Uh, next week, uh, necessary. But thank you in anticipation uh, for your generous support. We're going to look today at Psalm 31 and a little later, uh, thinking about God's care for us in all circumstances. And that's where it was the theme of Psalm 121. Remember your words. I lift my eyes to the hills where does my help come from. My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. Let's pray and speak God's blessing. Father, we rejoice that we can come on this beautiful Sunday morning into your presence. We commit all to you and ask that you will be honoured and glorified in all that is said and done. And we say, pray that we will sense your presence among us and that the Lord you will encourage, challenge and refresh us. And we pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. As always, thank you to Hazel for her work at Monty and to the choir and preacher. So, so we, we begin, begin our first item of praise. As we the 23rd Psalm, the modern version of Lord's My Shepherd. <laughs>
Let's join in prayer. Father, we praise you and thank you uh, for your goodness, for your endless love, for your mercy. We thank you that you're God who is worthy of all praise and honour. In order to come before you, we acknowledge that we ought to let you down, but you are faithful. We thank you that you are a kind and a generous God, a God who is patient with us, and a God who is willing to forgive us when we come in true repentance before you. Lord, we thank you for the image of the sand, the image of the shepherd who cares for the sheep, the shepherd who guards the sheep, who guides the sheep, who leads the sheep to fresh pastures. And Lord, we thank you that you are our shepherd, our friend, our saviour, the one who guards and guides us, and the one who leads us into real blessing. And we pray, Lord, that we might trust you fully and be trust in you alone. Lord, forgive us when we fail you. Forgive us when we trust in our own abilities and skills and knowledge. And help us to humbly declare that our trust is in you alone, the one who is faithful. We thank you that your love is a strong factor. And whatever trial we face, we can know that you are with us that we belong to you, and the Lord will watch over us. We thank you uh, today for each day by before you, young and old alike, and we thank you that each one of us can look to you and know that you care for us in the play. We can look to you and know that your way is always best. And the Lord, when we are confused and uncertain, we pray that you help us to look to you. When we face pressure, we pray that you help us to lean upon you. Lean upon the everlasting arms of a faithful, just, and a righteous God. And as we come before you, we thank you for the beauty of your creation. We thank you for this beautiful weather and for your blessing, particularly upon the farming community in recent days. And we just ask indeed that you will draw near to one and all. And as we would read your word today, we ask that you give us understanding. And we pray that word will come alive to us that we will understand how it can impact us, how it can encourage us, how it can challenge us. And we just pray at the outset of this service of worship that all honour and glory will go to you alone, the one who deserves all praise, the one who is faithful. And we thank you, Lord, that you go before us, you guide us, you watch over us. And we just ask that we would send your touch upon us today, that we would know that we are in the presence of a living God, we thank you as always for all your gifts to us, but especially for the Lord Jesus Christ, and the Lord, the one who is the only mediator to God and man, the one who bridges that gap, who brought reconciliation between sinful man and you, a holy God. We thank you for our Lord and Savior, and we thank you that we can approach you in and through his name, and we pray, Lord, that we will lift high and exalt the lovely name of Jesus in our time of worship today. So Lord, take all the distraction from our minds and speak to us as we read and as we study your word together. And may Christ be exalted. In his precious name we pray. Amen. We're going to read together. Um, if you want to follow the view Bible, it is page 558. 559. Going to read together Psalm 31. Psalm 31. Psalm of David. This is God's word. In you, o Lord, I have taken refuge that may never be put to shame. Deliver me in your righteousness, turn your ear to me, and come quickly to my rescue. Be my rock of refuge, a strong fortress to save me. Since you are my rock and my fortress, for the sake of your name, lead and guide me. Free me from the trap that is set for me, for you are my refuge. In your hands I commit 
my spirit, with thee, my Lord, the God of truth. I hate those who cling to worthless idols, and I trust in the Lord. I will be glad and rejoice in your love, for you saw my affliction, and you the anguish of my soul. You have not had me over to the enemy, but have set my feet in a spacious place. Be merciful to me, O Lord, for I am in distress. My eyes grow weak with sorrow, my soul and my body with grief. My life is consumed by anguish and my ears, my groaning, my strength feels because of my affliction, and my bones grow weak. Because of all my enemies, I am the utter contempt of my neighbours. I am a dread to my friends. Those who see me on the streets flee from me. I am forgotten by them, as though I were dead. I have become like broken pottery. For I hear the chatter of many, there is terror on every side. They conspire against me and plot to take my life. But I trust in you, O Lord. I say you are my God. My times are in your hands. Deliver me from, your, from my enemies and from those who pursue me. Let your face shine and your servants save me in your feeling love. Let me not be put to shame, Lord, for I have cried out to you. But let the wicked be put to shame and I silent and real. Let their lying lips be silenced, for with pride and contempt they speak arrogantly against the righteous. How great is your goodness, which you have stored up for those who fear you, which you bestow in the sight of men on those who take refuge in you. In the shelter of your presence you find them from the intrigues of men. In your dwelling you keep them safe from accusing tongues. Praise be to the Lord, for he showed his wonderful love to me when I was in the deceased city. And my alarm, I said, I am cut off from your sight. <coughs> Yet you heard my cry for mercy when I called to you for help. Love the Lord of the saints. The Lord reserves the faithful, but the proud he pays back in the full. Be strong and take heart, all you who hope in the Lord. Amen. We go God to the last reading of his grace. Right, right boys and girls, you're scattered here and there. If you want to come to the front, that would be great. There are a few seats over here, or you can bring a few seats over. Bring those chairs across, that would be great. We'll just make something like that, just a second. Part of the front. All right, that's grand. Lovely to see so many of you. That's great. If you just anywhere at all, you can just walk there. Good. All right. Right, children, have you had a good week? Yeah. Yeah? Great. Enjoying the weather. That's good. And helping on the farm. Some, Some of you. you. No. no. Have you got anyone helping on the farm? No. no. Yeah. What are you? Right. right. Okay. okay. I'm, I'm trying, trying to remember, remember what I have on this. this. Oh, oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. right. What's, what's this? this? What's, what's that? that? What's that? Circus. Yep. Uh, I was done with this with my mom yesterday. On the way to Arma, on the way we passed Circus Pensella, and there's a lot of people going to it. A lot of children. Lots of children. I can't remember who it was at the circus. This is another one, and I think it's in the Korea area starting soon. It says Vegas Circus. So, I don't know if any of you have been to the circus or planning to go. What sort of things happen in the circus? Animals. Animals. Acrobats. Acrobats, very good. good. And then, yeah. yeah. Acrobats, Acrobats, very good. And years, years ago, it used to be animals. And as far as I know, uh, most of the circuses now don't, don't have animals. And I think one of the says that. that. There's, There's no, no animals. Because um, it's not kind of any water and caring for them. So it's, it's mainly other things. things and you mentioned acrobats. I'll show you a few things that's that supposed to be on. Uh, available in this, in this one, one in Korea, and it's taken from uh, online, so it's right. Okay, what are they throwing there? Fire. Yeah, what are they throwing there? Okay, okay so, so you might see that if you go and add some line to that. Can any of you do that? that? No, no, well, well don't, don't try, try it at home. Okay. Or church, either. 
Okay, okay flame flame throwers, throwers, jumping, jumping flame flame throwers, you might see them there. Okay. And I don't, I don't know if you call him an acrobat or not, but he's doing, doing something in that. How do you just write that? He jumps out there, but obviously he's gone around and around with this, this, so you might, might see him. him. Um, that's, that's someone, someone doing stunts, stunts in the motor bag, so you might have panels, but you might have sanders or motor bags, okay. That'll be there as well, apparently, okay. And you said acrobats, is this what you were thinking? Yes. Yep. Why, has anyone done that? No. Oh, no. All right. Hopefully there's a net on her. Yeah, acrobats. And sometimes, sometimes when there's, and the one, the picture I didn't have, what else? It used to be in circuses. No animals. What else? Clowns. Yeah. Those are any kinds of clowns. So I'm not sure if there's any clowns in the circus or not. But there will be. There will be. There will be. There will be acrobats. Okay. And here you can see three people. You can see something stop and something flying across the one on the far side. And you have any idea what you might call the one on the far side there? Standing with the arms outstretched. Can you can guess what you call that person in that act. Now they're, they're doing something, so what are they doing to the person who's flying across there? They're going to... Huh? Catcher. Catcher. Perfect. Yep. yep. The flyer is the one that's coming across. The catcher is the one who holds the hands out, and then the catcher will catch the person who's doing the somersaults and so forth. So do you think the one that's coming across has to trust this person? Yes. Yeah, absolutely. I'm, I'm not sure. sure. I would want to do it. Well, I would get up there, I'm sure. <laughs> but <laughs> you'd like to see the try. Yeah. yeah. The, the catcher is the person who is there and has their hands extended out. Their arms extended out and their hands. And they're going to catch the one who's flying across. I think, I think you call the person the flyer. He's coming across and they talk about this person being the catcher. Okay, so, so the, the person is coming across and doing all of those loops and somersaults. They must trust the catcher, they must depend upon them, they must have strong hands to hold them. And that, and that reminds me of a verse that we read in the psalm. And David was writing, and David, I think I have the verse up here. Yeah, yeah in your hands, I commit my spirit. spirit. You will redeem me, Lord. Faithful God, and then later my times are in your hands. Verse 15. So the flyer, the one who's flying through the air, trusts the catcher to be strong and to hold on to them and not drop them. And that reminds us of David. And David is saying, I trust you, God. My times are in your hands. I trust you to hold me when things are difficult. And through that psalm, we were thinking about it, we knew why. We've been thinking about it with adults. Through the psalm, David is talking about times that were difficult, times he was suffering. When others were giving him a hard time, or when he was sick, all sorts of things were going wrong, and he says, my times are in your hands. And he's saying, I trust you to hold me to your right pastor. You won't let me down. I can depend upon you. And you know that's wonderful to know, because no matter who we are, young or old or in between, Whatever, the, the times where we were disappointed, many times things are going wrong, wrong. we're having a hard time, we at school, at home, wherever. And I remember we can, like David, say, no matter what's happening, my times are in your hands. I trust you. You are faithful. You will never, ever let me down. Now, hopefully, the, the catcher or the circus there won't drop the person, but they usually have an app underneath just in case, isn't that right? Just in case. But we, we can be certain that God will never drop us, so to speak. God will hold us firm. And if we ask Jesus to be our Savior, if we trust in Jesus each day, He will guide us, He will lead us, and God's hands are firm and strong, and He will take care of us. And it's great to be able to say to God, I know you're a great God, and I know you love me. My times are in your hands. You're in control of everything. Um, I trust you. Okay, okay, let's pray for a moment. Father, we thank you that you're a great God who made all things. You made us, you love us, you send your Son to be our Savior. Lord, we pray that when we have difficult times, when we're confused or sad, we will say, my times are in your hands. 
Lord, Lord, help us to trust you, to know that you're in control, to know that you're strong and a loving God, and you will guide your children. We thank you for these boys and girls. Bless them now as they go to Children's Church. Watch over them in the days ahead. Lord, may they know your favor and your blessing each day. For we pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, okay, so do go to the circus, and the next time you think about it, is there please remember to capture flyer trust him. A we can, can trust God. God. So we're, we're going, going to sing now, and it reminds us of God's love. He's got the whole world in his hands. Okay, and we sing this, and then you head out to Children's Church. Okay? <laughs>
Lord, we're going to pray for our prayers and dedication and intercession. And I'm sure we're all very well aware of the tragedy that happened not too far from here just a few days ago. And we remember the Mitchell family and all involved in that tragedy. And then as we pray for others, uh, it's good to remember the work of missions. Yesterday I was at a conference from EMF in the Baptist Church. And we were reminded that Europe is probably the most evangelized continent there is. A lot of secularization. There was a couple of lovely young pastors from one minute, one from Portugal, who was sharing about the work and church plan there. So we pray for the work of EMF. And we pray for Europe. There was a I would like to a Ukrainian pastor. And it was interesting to hear how God is still blessing even in the midst of that war situation. With our own ECI, there are a few points on the prayer line just to mention. It mentions the Reverend David Curran. Um, recently we received a call to a redevelopment work in the South of Ireland to Wexford. Praying for David and his family as they prepare to move. Later in the summer, we begin this new work. And then exams, pray for our children as they commence exam season in school. Pray that their minds are settled as they prepare so that they have a sense of peace going into the exams. Remember those who struggle, help them to remember that all things work together for good. Give thanks for teachers and learning to support and assist us. So let's come to God. Father, we do thank you that you go before us and guide us and that you are sovereign over all things. And we thank you for the offering that we have committed to you. And we pray, Lord, that you use it for your honour and glory and an extension of Christ's kingdom. As we come before you today, uh, we are conscious of the pain of the Mitchell family and the tragedy that happened just a few days ago in this locality. And Lord, we lift up that family before you. We do ask that the Lord you were graciously draw near to the family circle, that the Lord they will know your loving arms around about and underneath. We pray for others tonight, that we pray for those who are in hospital, and that the Lord they will make a full and speedy recovery. And Lord, we pray indeed for the farmer also involved in it. We just ask, Lord, that each one will be conscious of your presence and know your blessing at this really difficult time. We thank you too for the emergency services and uh, for all that they were able to do. And we just would ask, Lord, your blessing upon them. And we thank you too for the work that you're hand of us. And we thank you that, as in the occasions in the past, it has been a great benefit to you pray for the service to continue and to be adequately funded. As we come before you today, we lift up before you the continent of Europe, conscious that. If it is becoming increasingly secular, we thank you for pastors and leaders of small and evangelical congregations in places in Portugal, in Italy, in Spain, and Poland, and other countries in Europe. And we just pray for your encouragement and your blessing. We pray very especially for the small evangelical church in Ukraine at a time of a continued conflict and heartache for our members. We ask that you would assure them of the prayers of your people. And we ask that you would encourage them and strengthen them. And Lord, help them in a difficult time to be faithful witnesses for Christ their Savior. At home, we think of David Curran, who has received the call to redevelop the work in Wexford. We just pray for David and his family as they prepare to move later in the summer. And we just ask that you would continue to guide and strengthen them. And Lord, may he know your hand upon them each step of the way. We have been reminded by PCI to pray for our children and our young people as they commence the busy exam season. And we pray for any who struggle and studies that the Lord you would help them and encourage them. And we do thank you that the you're in control of all things and that all things work together for good for those who love you. We thank you for teachers and learning support assistance and just pray your blessing upon all involved in the education of our children and young people. And we pray for those who have gone through university and will graduate soon and Lord are even looking for employment and we just ask that they would do your help and encouragement also. And Lord, we know that you have a definite plan for each one of us. And we pray for especially our Christian young people that 
they will be conscious that you are leading and directing in their lives, and that, Lord, you have a perfect plan for their future. Help each one to trust you fully and to know your guiding hand upon them. We pray finally for ourselves that as we turn to your word, that the Lord will speak into our hearts and help us to understand your word and to see how it applies in our lives daily. These things we pray in the precious name of Jesus, our Savior. Amen. Before we turn to the Word of God, we are going to sing, Seeth in the shadow of the Lord, beneath his hand and power. I trust in him. I trust in him. children earlier about the circus has changed over many years and uh, lions and animals might have disappeared but, but traditionally for the circus the trapeze act was the final act and you mentioned there were two performers described as catchers and flyers let me read what one person written about this the catcher hangs by his face from a trapeze bar and swings back and forth on a trapeze that has a short arc. The flyer, who will be smaller and lighter, that's probably why I rule it out. The flyer, who will be smaller and lighter, swings back and forth on a trapeze swing with a huge arc. The flyer will release herself from the bar, and as she descends, reach out at the last minute and find the strong hands of the catcher. 
and that as it is a fire may or may not do several somersaults in the air first, but the key to success will always be the catcher being there in the right place at the right time. The fire must have confidence that strong, secure hands are waiting. In Psalm 31, as we read together, David speaks about the hands of someone who will always be there to catch us. Someone who will never, never fail us. Verse 5 and verse 6, it says, In your hands I commit my spirit. And then here in verse 14 and 15, I trust in you, Lord. I say you are my God. My times are in your hands. Someone has said verse 5 is the ultimate expression of trust. The ultimate expression of trust. Of course, when you recognize these words spoken by both Stephen and our Savior, they, however, were the only ones to quote Psalm 31, verse 5, in your hands, I commit my spirit. Apparently, when they were dying, uh, it was quoted by John Huss, by Martin Luther, by John Knox, and some others. Briefly, I want to think about our times being in God's hands. And the sad reminds us of a variety of things that can come against us in all of these times. All of these times we need to know we are in God's hands. Jerry Kidner gives the psalm the simple title, Stress. And he notes how the psalm was quoted by Jeremiah and Jonah in times of difficulty. So I want to share simply a few thoughts about this psalm. First, our lives are in God's hands when life is in danger. Verses 1 to 3. It won't surprise you to know that scholars do not agree in the exact occasion in which David penned these words. But David's life was often an honor threat. We know that as we read through the Psalms. On numerous occasions, as he was pursued by Paul, he was in positions of great danger. He was in great vulnerability. These three verses, verse 1 to 3, are repeated at the end of the opening three verses of Psalm 71. Perhaps this is getting how often by David felt that his life was in danger. There was no certainty he would live to see another day, but he was calling out to God as his refuge, as his strong fortress. He was praying that in the darkness of uncertainty, God would lead him, God would guide him, God would support him and strengthen him. And of course, we can easily see the relevance for those who are facing death or situations are precarious and uncertain. They can say, yes, my life is in danger. The future is uncertain, but it is in God's hands. It is in God's hands, and I trust him completely. Our lives are in God's hands when life is in danger. Verses 1 to 3, secondly, our lives are in God's hands when we face Temptation, verses 4 and 5. Don't know what David prays, verses 4 and 5. Free me from the trap that is set for me, for you are my refuge. In your hands I commit my spirit. Redeem me, O Lord, to the God of truth. Free me from the trap that is set for me. We don't know what David is referring to when he speaks about a trap. But Michael Wilcock argues that there is value in not knowing. He adds, as with the New Testament example of Paul's thorn in the flesh, it enables all of us, every one of us, to put ourselves in the right position and to say, that could be me. And the trap for us could be any threatening circumstance from which we can see no escape, or it could be some temptation that we are really struggling with, and we can't seem to gain a clear and decisive victory over it. David Hughes was not alone when facing the sudden traps of the enemy, and neither is the believer today. God saves, and then God keeps his own. Spurgeon, the great Spurgeon, did it this way. The Lord is equal to every emergency, and the most skillfully placed nets of the hunter shall never be able to hold his chosen ones. Our life is in God's hands 
when we face death, when we face temptation. But as David continues to our lives are in God's hands when we are in spiritual turmoil. Verses 6 to 8. As David continues in the psalm, he gives us a glimpse of his inner turmoil. He shares with God the battle that is going on inside his heart. And note what he speaks about in verses 6 to 8. Affliction and anguish. I hate those who bring the word of silence. I trust in the Lord. I will be glad and rejoice in your love. For you saw my affliction. You knew the anguish of my soul. You have not had me over to the enemy, but have set my feet in a spacious place. He speaks of affliction. He speaks of anguish of soul. But he praises God that he has heard him. He praises God that God has helped him. God has saw him. The God who knew the Sam's trouble is the Lord who has seen and known the given anguish of people down through the generations. And that was true of Israel and Egypt. We read this in Exodus 3 verse 7. The Lord said, I have indeed seen the ministry of my people in Egypt. I have heard their crying out because of the slave drivers. And I am concerned about their suffering. And this God understands us when we are in a spiritual turmoil. He sympathizes with us in the difficult times when we feel it empty. But when prayer and reading God's words is a struggle, when we feel discouraged, when we are ready to quit, when we are spiritually speaking battered and bruised, feeling wounded and hurt, remember the believer is in God's hands. Our life in God's hands. When we are in spiritual turmoil. But fourthly, as the psalmist continues, our eyes is in God's hands when we face feeling health. Verses 9 and 10. Nobody of it writes, Be merciful to me, O Lord, for I am in distress. My eyes were weak with sorrow, my soul and my body with grief. My eyes are consumed by anguish in my life, and my ears by groaning, my strength feels. Because of my affliction and my bones grow weak. The Psalms may have been recalling the terrible loss that followed the sin with Bathsheba and the murder of Bathsheba's husband, Uriah. The grief at that time was all encompassing. It was exhaustive as day burst into night and night dragged on until daylight came. David was so dizzy with regret and remorse, and this is a physical as well as emotional consequences for him. However, it can very aptly be viewed as simply a portrait of feeling health for David and the struggles associated with advancing years of old age. <coughs> it is a painful picture, and it would be hopeless if not for the realization that even in this state, our lives are in the hands of a loving and caring and faithful God. But as David continues, he touches upon all the struggles which are less physical and turns to the more spiritual and emotional. And so the next verse is we see that the lives are in God's hands when we feel lonely. Verse 11 to 13. Note what David says there. Because of all my enemies, I am the utter contempt of my neighbors. I am a dread to my friends. Those who see me on the streets flee from me. I am forgot by them as though I were dead. I have become like broken pottery. For I hear the sound of many. There is terror on every side. They conspired against me and plot to take my life. David sees that his friends have abandoned him. Former neighbors and friends are holding in contempt and even in dread. And it seems that they don't even want to know him any longer. In fact, more than that, they avoided him. Saul's campaign against the Alexander has been so successful, there was no end to the folly, no end to the conspiring against David. So, how does David feel here? He feels rejected, isolated, alone. And we can all have those feelings at times feelings of abandonment, a feeling that no one understands us, no one even cares. But these are times to remember the faithfulness. Of God. 
And Psalm 27, David made this declaration, Though my father and mother forsake me, the Lord will never leave me. The Lord will receive me. Our life is in God's hands and he cares for us and we are never alone. After David shares about his feelings of isolation, he moves on to speak then about active opposition. And we learn from this secondly that our lives are in God's hands when we are being persecuted. Verses 14 to 20. A great wave of assurance speaks over David at this point, and he writes this, But I trust in you, Lord. I say you are my God. My times are in your hands. Deliver me from my enemies. I say you are my God. My God captures David's intimacy. While his dependence on God comes out in the phrase, My times are in your hands. Derek Kidner has pointed out that the phrase my times faces the necessary fact of transience and change, both in one's own being and in one's surroundings, while in your hands speaks of the knowledge that change is not chance. In other words, we are uncertain and we are unsure of our future, but we commit all to the God who changes not, to the God who is in control. David was being sad in verse 18. Nobody says, let their language be silenced, for with pride and contempt they speak arguably about the righteous. Today God's people face slander and lies and terrible persecution in communist and Muslim-dominated countries especially. For example, North Korea is often at the top of the list of persecution, and tens of thousands of Christians are either executed or languish in jails and horrible conditions. They're objects of contempt, treated in a degrading manner. The 13th verse of Psalm 31 was the cry of the persecuted Jeremiah, and it's the cry of multitudes today. I hear the sound of many, there's terror on every side. They conspire against me and plot to take my life. Yet, like David, these dear people in North Korea, Iran, Saudi Arabia, Vietnam, Indonesia, all these countries, Nigeria, they're able to rejoice and declare, You are my God. My times are in your hands. David describes his condition to God and affirms his trust in God. He called on God to rescue him and vindicate him and give him hope. And in his confidence in prayer is based on the knowledge that he is in God's hands. Now, of course, we may not be persecuted like many others today, but often there is a cost to standing up for the Christian faith. You might be deliberately sidelined. You might be ignored or find yourself hated as someone who is intolerant because you reject the view of the world. And when you feel harassed because you won't go along with just anything and be persecuted for having godly principles, remember your health securely. In God's hands. The Bible tells us if we're like the world, the world will love us. But if we're like Jesus, we will be reviled and persecuted and opposed. And the important thing, however, is that even when the world rejects us, God holds us securely. Our life is in God's hands when the world persecutes us. But then finally, as we come towards the end of the psalm, our lives are in God's hands when we feel rejection by God. Note how the psalm, as we move towards the end, verses 21 and 22, note the words of David. Praise be to the Lord, for he showed his wonderful love to me when I was in a deceit say, In my alarm I said, I am cut off from your sight. Yet you heard my cry for mercy when I called to you for help. When the prophet Jonah ran from God, we know that he ended up in the valley of the fish, and in his prayer, Jonah echoes these words I said, I have been banished from your sight, yet I will look again towards your holy temple. Jonah 2, verse 4. Like David, Jonah prayed for God to rescue him, and God mercifully did. 
You are about to make sacrifices to God with songs of praise after his rescue, but in fact, if you read through the book of Jonah, and we did some time ago, there's no record that Jonah did. Instead, he complained because God blessed others more than he thought they deserved. And because of this, Jonah missed out on the blessing that verse 19 mentions. Blessings stored up for us. And you often were like Jonah and used pieces of God's word to comfort us in tough times, but conveniently forget God's challenge when all is well. God wants us to rest in perfect safety in his hands. But we should be like Jonah and forget to praise and thank God for it. So in this Psalm, Psalm 31, David covers so many circumstances that cause stress and worry. Feeling health, imminent death, loneliness, isolation. He speaks of persecution from enemies. He speaks about the inner spiritual anguish of a guilty soul. And finally the frightening thought of being abandoned by the God he trusted and served. But in each and every situation, God was near. Like atrophies, catchers, strong hands were in the right place at the right time to keep David from falling. God, as we noted at the beginning in Psalm 21, declares that he never sleeps or slumbers. He's never weary or tired. He is continually working his will. In the middle of blessings and good times, we can find God's hand. And in the core of our sorrows, we can also be conscious and find God's hands. We can be secure knowing all our times are in his hands. Spurgeon said this, my times are in thy hand. He said this, the great truth of this verse is this, that all that concerns the believer is in the hands of Almighty God. The God is not just mighty, the God who is almighty holds the believer firmly in his hands in each and every circumstance. Amen. That's why I for a moment in prayer. Father, we thank you for the confidence of the Son of David. And Lord, as he goes through various circumstances, he is confident in that he is continually held firmly in your loving and strong arms. We thank you that when he faces worry and stress, health issues, feelings of isolation, persecution, loneliness, a feeling of abandonment even, we thank you that in all these circumstances, we can know that you're there watching over us and our times are in your hands. And we thank you indeed that our times are in the hands as Spurgeon reminds us of Almighty God. Not just one who is mighty, but one who is almighty. One who has all power and glory and dominion. Forgive us for stressing and fretting and worrying and help us to trust in you alone and to declare our times are in your hands. So Lord, I place it in there. These things we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs> Final phrase is a phrase, it's really a prayer. My times are in your hands, my God, I wish them there. My life, my friends, my soul, I leave entirely to your care.
May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and fellowship of the Holy Spirit be our portion of strength this day and forevermore. Amen.